Start start all over. Five, four, three. We'll do it live. We're live from 304 Studios in Jonesboro. So this is an STS Pod dot club production. I'm BT and that guy over there. There's only one person. One person that we could get on here to finish up all episodes of Memphis in May. And that's five star Dustin star. How the hell are you, man? Oh yeah. I am doing awesome. If I was any better, I would be sick. I'm here at the wrestle center. We are going to do training here in just a bit. So there's no telling who's going to walk in this door and peek around this uh, computer screen, but we will find out. Just to let you know, the timer's going on conversations. We talk for 20 minutes. We might stop right in the middle of a subject and you just have to get on Patreon or you have to get on the Memphis to actually finish the conversation on the Memphis site there on YouTube. Uh, man, there's been a lot going on in the last two weeks involving Buff Bagwell. So tell us when did, okay, so he wins the titles. The next week you come out and we had to um, strip him well, of first, the belt. Because first he, he was, there was, if you rewind back, uh, Big John Dalton was on the phone with somebody. That's where after, I want to start. I want to start with being bullied. When did you, when did y'all say, hey, we're going to, I mean, how long has it been? Buff's been there three or four times. I know BJD, and you can tell the story, he's been knowing Buff for a long time, right? Yes, he's known Buff since he was just a, I mean, a little kid. Um, gosh, probably even before he was eight years old. He's 18 now, so that's 10 years. Favorite wrestler growing up, like his mentor, has his Buff hats, has boots, neck bands that buffs worn on television i mean he's got all sorts of buff memorabilia the biggest buff daddy fans that there are is uh, big daddy and big john dalton so it, you know when buff first came we kind of paired that up and started telling that story so that was a couple years ago now you fast forward here gosh i mean we knew like this thing has been in the making for a minute because big john dalton months ago was on the phone with buff as he was getting bullied on television and then you fast forward, you let it breathe just a little bit, let the heels do what the heels do, and then they bully him again. And then you have, you know, one week, Buff comes over and puts his arm around Dalton, and he's surprised that he's there. And then you've got Buff making his, uh, you know, re-debut inside the Wrestle Center with Big John Dalton doing the challenge. And then you've got the tag team title match. And I think a lot of people thought that we had some shenanigans I, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I don't get the, I don't do spoilers. Y'all don't tell me anything. Well, no, I mean, with us marketing that Scotty Riggs was I coming too. right I after, thought, they, they, I think people thought that there was something that was going to happen there, but it didn't. And Buff actually wrestled that match, and it was his first match in a really long time. And believe me, we know that Buff is not physically able to do what he used to do. But what a freaking moment, man! The place went crazy, the internet went crazy, and I'm not just sitting here like acting as if the internet went crazy. I mean, literally every major dirt sheet is talking about it. I agree. It I was mean, uh, one of those things. Every you, single one. Yeah. I, I popped for it. I marked out for it. I did not expect I thought y'all were going to run an angle at the very front where somebody jumped above and then he at BJD had to get him. Actually, I didn't, I didn't even see the title change coming. I saw them beating <laughs> Buff up. And them continuing as the champions and, and leaving BJD uh, laying in the ring and too. And so of when views it happened, yeah. And when he started work wrestling, when he started wrestling, I was like, "Oh shit, no way!" And then I kept yeah. saying to myself, "There's no way they're putting the tag belts on Buff. They're not." And then I said, as I'm watching the match, I said to myself, "God, now this would be a." You always talk about this. Uh, so shooting star, get on the YouTube page and subscribe because we talk about moments. You 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 are the guy that wants to see moments. You want to see clicks. You want to see people and wrestling fans from all over say, "Oh my God, that's awesome!" That was and a moment. That was a moment. That was one of the biggest was, moments so far in Memphis wrestling. That was a huge moment. It was huge for our company. It's huge for Big John Dalton. It was huge for Buff Bagwell because Buff you know, basically using our platform and us using him as a feature attraction on our platform to try to make all this happen. Now, and I'm, when we booked it, did you, we couldn't have said, well, Ringside News and PWI Insider and Fightful and 
you know, all these guys are, we didn't know that they were going to pick this up, but we knew that there was a good chance that if it was done correctly, you know, that it would happen and that there would be some sort of, um, you know, ruckus about it. But yeah, it was posted well, everywhere. And, all kinds of stuff. Number one, let's just go back. Let's, let's go ahead and search the internet if you want to, Buff Bagwell. He's not, he's been a guy that, let me just, I'm going to just put, he's had some problems. We all know he that. He has a dark side of the ring episode. And he and has a dark side of the ring, which was recent. <laughs> That's all we needed. <laughs> which was recent. Uh, yes. It's all on the internet. Okay, too, so let's let's that. talk about that for just a second. So I think that was released in April. I had him confirmed in March or late February because I knew that dark side of the ring was coming. And that was the perfect time to bring Buff back. And then also with the stories and just how heartfelt they were. And, man, these dudes, Scotty and Buff shedding tears on television and all that kind of stuff. It was like, okay, well, this could definitely be a really good moment. And it's not done yet. You know, I know the tag team titles and what happened last week and everything well, else. Well, he mentioned on this week's or Saturday's uh, show, he mentioned something which kind of spoiled it. But but he told me well, said there'll be no, – maybe, maybe. He's now, hold on. His, now, and, and I'll, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, one of his tag team partners, I'm going to go through – I'll go through every one of them on Rolling in the Memphis and we'll decide which one that he's going to do. But but right now, I mean, with we know who came in and we know where it could be. But I'm I'm that kind of guy that don't even know whether Scotty Riggs is wrestling or not. So I don't well, – that's, that's the thing is that – um is that you you don't know and it kind of baffles me sometimes like i'm shocked but there are people that follow us and they watch on youtube and all that kind of stuff but they don't necessarily follow the marketing you know they're they're genuinely surprised like oh my goodness buff is here and i'm like dude we've been marketing buff for three months <laughs> you should have known he was coming might not have known when he was coming but if we've marketed this that long is that is that that but cool they don't pay or... attention to it i guess if you're yeah, out of the market maybe they're not watching gonna come no yeah. matter what you have a you have a core of people that but just buy tickets and you can go i mean jamie's one of them uh jamie was with me uh a couple weekends back in evansville uh and the, i'm just gonna go ahead and say the real pretty older lady and i don't want her to feel bad because i'm probably older than her i can't remember her name i got her on facebook happy. what's her name yeah, you got Kathy. You've got Kathy. Uh, yes, Dad. Kathy. That's it. You've I started following her on Keith Facebook. On one side, Crazy Lewis. Then you got other Keith on the other side. I mean, you've got Miss Lois. I mean, it's awesome. I don't yeah, want to yeah. leave anybody out, but like, literally, when we first started this thing, somebody said, "Hey, do you want to switch everybody's seats around because it, it'll look different every week?" And they were like, "We're not moving. No, this right. is my seat." And so then we 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 have these seats saved on a code. So if you are a regular that's coming and you don't have your seat saved and you have to be the first to get your ticket so you can hurry up and get it, then you need to hit me up so we can get you a safe seat. So that's that's changed the game. You know, they're they're not waiting at the door to get to that seat anymore. They already have their seat. They right, bought it right, right. saved so they can mingle, meet and greet. But yeah, I mean, we've got a really good fan base, man. And I was talking to King Cobra about it the other day, and it's not really about, you know, back in the day, in Cobra's day. He was trying to make the people believe that it was real. Right. It's not like that anymore. No, he, no, he understands that. He doesn't necessarily like it, but he understands it enough to where, you know, to do business and everything. And I said, well, Cobra, it's different now. Now they know. So we just got to surprise them every now and then. We got to give them. Do you think it was a big speech. surprise? This is, the people at the Wrestle Center, did they think that Buff was really going to wrestle, or some of them think you had some shenanigans going on also? A lot of them are diehard fans, so just like you and just like when we were putting it together, I think they thought there were going to be some shenanigans. But I think we do a really good job, probably better than most, about giving the fans that epic moment. Even if we take it away later, at least you get that big epic babyface moment. And babyface moments, man, are – there. I mean, there's heel moments where it leaves the people – angry and those are cool trust me when it gets quiet in the wrestle center a lot of people don't like it but i do because when you're mad you're just like it's called silent heat and if yes, you've ever I'm felt right. it in the ring Ooh. if you've ever been a performer and you felt it in the ring you know at that moment that you have done something that they didn't expect and yeah. they are pissed i hit yep. dakota who was a big woman with a clipboard one time and she she bladed 
And that oh, whole boy. place was quiet, and I was scared. Just put it that way. Yeah. I was scared yeah, to be part of that. But it is a Nothing moment. like a big baby face moment, though. A big baby face You're moment, right. though, is, is a big pop. And then what you guys sometimes don't see, unless it's on Memphis Wrestling Plus or on the members only, is there's hugging. The fans are involved. There's high fives. There's gifts. Sometimes there's tears. I mean, and it's, it's almost a shame that the show's not like – one hour and five minutes long, <laughs> you know, or whatever. But but all that stuff is done on purpose. We put a lot of that stuff on the on the paid content, so that you got to be there to see it. You got to be there to see it. And some of it. So like, what? We don't have Buff really here, but I, I know he's had to talk to you about this. How? What? What did it mean to him? It had to mean a lot to him too. It, it did. It meant a whole lot to him. Not only for us to trust in him to, you know, even get in there, but then for him to be so generous. And I know that him and Dalton and the and you know Big Daddy and their family are, are tight and all that kind of stuff, but you know I mean business is business, and so for him to come in and you know play a mentorship role on television and win some tag team titles, uh, Dalton's first ever championship that he's won, I mean that's a that's a story that's not necessarily even it's cool today and everything, but when we look back on it from ten years from now, that'll be something that we're like, man, Dalton, look how your career started, look at you now, and hopefully. Hopefully, and this is no disrespect, but hopefully that that Buff Bagwell tag team title win is just a small blip on what Dalton has accomplished in 10 years. But when we do these things, it's not – it is for now because it's cool, but it's more like from years from now. We've got history. We can rewind back. Right, We've right, right. Character, Big John Dalton, who should stay with us from now until he moves on to bigger and better things. you know. And then when he goes and does bigger and better things and comes back, because they always come back, then he can help us again and help us even more. So, I mean, this is something that we're just planning in the long term. And that's just one story. I mean, you can look all over the place. Main event Bradley and Big Nasty Phil have been in the ring with everybody from Hammerstone to Lance Archer. And that's only in the last six months or so, you know. Um, Jay Webb has gotten the rub. Ray Collins for the last couple of years. You know, he's teamed with everybody from Elijah Burke to, gosh, um, Money, money, yeah, yeah. What's he calling himself now? Uh, JTG, what's his new name? Oh, gosh. Anyways, but like these characters that we're bringing in, you know, it's cool to help pop the young guy's career, but then also carrying that history. Now you look back, it's like, oh, damn, Ray Collins was in the ring with Elijah Burke. That's pretty cool. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. Just building on something for the future instead of just hot shotting everything you know right right i i mean i love the long stories i've told you since day one uh, uh you know i mean you got a girl like cassandra golden who was there the very first show you got there's her story you got k tumor the champion he was there at the very first show in the audience so you got his story and that all of that means something uh and there's been a lot of criticism for some reason just recently but but with AEW not really doing storytelling like it needs to be. And I'm like, I've got two guys <laughs> that AEW should be giving tons of, well, I know two of y'all that's helping, but two guys that AEW needs to be giving y'all tons of money to write their stories because uh, I consider myself old school and I'm still getting popped. So I'm not really knowing what's going to go on. And you've even said to me a couple of times, well, man, we, we laid these breadcrumbs. With this, uh, I think it was Tim Grind Angle with Lance, uh, yep. and you said we've been we've been laying. I said I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it at all. You're at the Wrestle Center, so there's going to be some people. You you play the commercials all the time and everything uh, on the show. You put it on YouTube. Who you got there? You oh, we've got it, uh, everybody. Uh, so tell me, in, and uh, we've got Brian Hit coming in. We had Sucker Boy come in just a second ago. Randy's back there. Hey, you know what one of my favorite things is? Is seeing some of the old classic wrestling fans come to the Wrestle Center. And I'm talking Channel 5 days when we were setting up the ring at Channel 5. Like, I mean, it's it's so cool. Like, Randy, uh, Randy's in here helping out around the Wrestle Center. But I saw him at FedEx Forum working security when I was going in, uh, the, you know, the media entrance. And I was like, Randy, where have you been? He's like, what do you mean? And you'd know Randy if you saw him. Uh, cause Probably he's would. I don't know who you're talking about. But yeah, yeah. I mean, he's never really uh, – I mean, he appears on our show from time to time, but not in speaking roles or anything like that. It's just kind of like security in the background. But I saw him, and I was like, oh, my gosh, you would love the Wrestle Center. You've got to come check it out. 
And so I, I, I hammered him. I hammered him. And then finally Simon saw him on wrestling night. I was like, dude, you need to come on. And so he came out and he's like, this is so cool. Like, what the hell? So now we can't get the guy away from here. <laughs> But tell us, about the wrestling center. tell us about Star training. Coming. How many times a week do you train? And you can go to the website. We all know. And you can, if you want to be a professional wrestler, uh, we got five minutes to talk about the wrestle center five and minutes. becoming a professional wrestler. Talk to me about five it. Five minutes. Go to WrestleCenter901.com. Coming up on June the 1st, Gabe Sapolsky, a WWE talent scout, is going to be here. We've got a couple of spots remaining. All you have to do is go onto the website and enroll. Uh, but then also, like, if you want to try that out to see if you like it before you enroll with our training, that's cool, too. You can do that on WrestleCenter901.com. I'm actually here today because I have somebody coming for their first day of training. They paid their deposit online. They start today. We've got some folks that we cannot keep away from here. They've been here ever since the doors have opened and they continue to come and train. It's not one of those things that you pay your money and then you're kicked out. No, no, man. Just because you finish paying your your tuition does not mean that you finish training and that you're a professional wrestler. So we have them keep coming back until they're ready. And what I mean by ready is until they're ready to get on television, because I want their first match to be right here at the Wrestle Center in front of a capacity crowd right there in their home where they've been training for the last six months, a year or whatever. And we've got some guys and gals that are ready. We've got some that are really close to being ready. We have some that are brand new. We had Denzel Rollins in here the other day helping training. We've had GCW world champion Blake Christian as a regular here. He comes usually once or twice a week, depending on if he's in Japan. Big congratulations on the success that he's Ooh, having. Yeah, he's doing very well. Had very Mike well. Anthony come a couple of times just uh, within this month, so he comes pretty regular. Gun shows here. I mean, there's no telling. Do you if think you watch... I need to go ahead and come and show him the BT bump? Yeah, hey, come on with the, uh, the clipboard. <laughs> you're supposed to grab. <laughs> The, the top rope, the middle rope, and finally the bottom one before you fall on your butt. Now that, that takes it skill, is, brother. It is so different than when I came up. I mean, and I'm not trashing when I came up. I'm just saying that everybody's so helpful, and it's like a team. They're cheering for each other. They're helping each other back with, you know, with techniques and all that kind of stuff. And then also um, Reverend, and believe it or not, and um, Ray Ray Sanders have stepped up, and they're two of our coaches here at the Wrestle Center. Reverend was on on a, an episode talking, you know, great things about about what he was doing, and we talking about on Patreon. We actually talked about where where are we going with the Reverend uh, gimmick, and where I I did I played BT the Booker, so uh, where I would go and I'd what love direction. To do that. But I love you, I, I you love. Anything with that character, like literally oh. one week in main event, the next week can open. I mean, that character and that group can do anything on the card. I, I agree 100%. There's just so uh, the healness of their group. Uh, there are going to be heels. No one's going to like them no matter what. Uh, you know, you don't, and I've said this many, many times, there's always a place for people in professional wrestling. And I told him, we may never see you wrestle on a regular basis. That might be what you do. That might be what you're uh, destined to do kind of thing. So you said you got some new people or some people that are almost ready. Can you throw out a name or two that's almost ready? Sucker boy. Oh. His name is Milton. His name is Milton. I don't know. He came up with the name Sucker Boy, so I, you know, I got. I'm going to go with it. Sucker Boy did make an appearance at FedEx Forum. He's he's big. He's jacked. I mean, he's gonna. Um, he'll be in front of Gabe coming up, which I think will really help. Um, he actually had a match. Um, I don't know that. I mean, he had a match at one of our fundraiser events. It was very good. You wouldn't know that it's him. He was uh, in a disguise, but. Um, Sucker boy, who else do we got? Man, we've got, you're going to hear a new voice. Or actually, you've already heard the new voice on Memphis Wrestling. There's a female ring announcer voice. That's Karis. You'll see her soon enough, but you'll be hearing her until then. Um, I, I don't even want to throw out any more names because there's no telling. Um, we've got some that are really, really getting close, really getting close. And the cool thing with them getting close is we have some brand new ones that are having their first, second, and third days coming up too. So it's a good awesome. rotation. And, and those those students that are a little more advanced can help those that are um, that are more novice. But then also it's really big on conditioning now. Conditioning is more important than ever, especially with somebody like Gabe coming. This is not a, just about wrestling. You know, when you look at these NXT and NLI um, uh, 
NIL or whatever next in line and all that kind of stuff, the workouts and everything, you cannot work out in the ring two days a week and then go to the performance center and do all the exercises that they need you to do and then perform at a high level. You have to be ring ready. And when I say like in shape, I don't mean like you got to have muscles and be jacked. K Toomer doesn't have muscles and jacked, but he is, he is very well conditioned inside the squared circle. Meaning very he can so. move. He All right, guys, we're going to close, close it up. We're closing up. We got 20 something. I was seconds about to left. give a big, big surprise. I was going to, a big surprise on the other side. Yeah, on the other side because <laughs> I'm, I'm fixing to fixing the say same bad time, same bad channel on the best little wrestling podcast in the business. Be there. And as everyone knows, you know this, Dustin. I love my mama. Join us on Patreon or the YouTube app. 